Today we finally reach one of the most iconic topics in analog electronics – amplifiers. But we'll not use boring LM or TDA chips, we're going full hardcore with transistors. Yeah, that's right, we're building real amplifiers, the kind that make you feel like you're in the 1970s garage with a soldering iron and a dream. Let's start simple the classic single transistor amplifier stage. And along the way we'll see how this vintage beast from the 70s behaves in linear mode. Just kidding, I'm not using that old relic yet. I've got plans for it, but that's a story for another day. Linear mode is tricky. You need to carefully tune the transistor's operation point. Here's our familiar common emitter circuit. The base gets its input through a resistor, and I'll monitor the output current with an LED. But this time I'll adjust the input voltage manually, with a potentiometer. I've hooked up two voltmeters. The left shows the voltage on the base, and the right shows the voltage across the load. By slowly turning the knob, we can watch how the output reacts. Kind of like watching a plant grow, but with more sparks. Up to about 350 millivolts on the base, nothing happens. The transistor is asleep, ignoring everything we feed it. Push past Z and it starts to wake up, like me before coffee. Approaching 600 millivolts, the base voltage stops rising, but now the current grows following on slow. And here's where the magic begins. Barely touching the fine-tuned resistors makes the output voltage swing by several volts. That's amplification. The transistor is alive and working in its active region. But keep increasing the voltage and eventually it hits its limit – saturation mode. No more amplification, just a fully open transistor. Basically the electronic version of I've had enough. In previous videos our transistors mostly worked as switches, either fully off or fully on. That's cut off and saturation, digital style. It's efficient because energy losses are minimal. Like your friend who only replies with yes or no, no middle ground. But analog signals? That and balancing act. We need the transistor to stay in that sweet spot in between, not too low, not too high, or we'll get nasty distortion. Kind of like karaoke after midnight. And here is a problem. Small input signals, less than 0.3 volts, don't even make the transistor up. To fix that, we preload the base with a tiny current through a resistor set in what's called the quiescent current. Ideally, with no input, the collector emitter voltage sits at half as the supply voltage, so the signal has headroom to swing up and down equally. Think of it as keeping your transistor in emotional balance. Alright, let's connect the microphone and see some real action. For fun, I'll use the 16 ohm speaker as a makeshift mic. Talking into it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, gives around 10 mV of signal. Too weak for my little toy oscilloscope to detect. Time to bring in the serious gear. There is another issue. The mic's signal starts at 0 V, but the transistor base sits around 6 V. So we'll add a coupling capacitor, one microfarad. If it is electrolytic, connects plus wire to the base, because it has higher potential. It blocks DC and lets the AC signal pass. Basically, it shifts the wave upward. Now when I speak, the output signal comes alive. But here's something fascinating. Even transistor of the same model can have wildly different current gains. That means every circuit might behave differently. Manually tuning every resistor would be torture. 
likely there's an elegant fix – add a resistor from a meter to ground. If the transistor amplifies too much, current rises, voltage on the emitter resistor rises too, and that automatically reduces base collector voltage, lowering the gain. Self-regulation. Brilliant. It's like a built-in chill-out circuit. As you see, even a single transistor already needs a handful of resistors, four to be exact. So if you ever wondered why old circuit boards are covered in resistors, now you know. It's not over-engineering, it's survival. Now let's add one more amplification stage. Same setup – capacitor, resistors, transistor. This time the output is strong enough to drive a speaker directly. For this experiment I am using the capsule from an old broken wireless mic. Rest in peace wireless mic, your sacrifice will not be forgotten. Way more sensitive than my DIY speaker mic. To visualize the output let's hook up an LED. And now with speaker. And yes, if it sounds like distortion and crackle instead of the clean voice, that's intentional. I've biased it to clip the negative half on the signal, because we're about to build something really fun. A sound level indicator. It's a three-stage amplifier, feeding a diet ladder and sensitivity control. Each diet drops about 0.6 volts and each transistor connects to them works as a switch, lighting up its LED when the input crosses that voltage threshold. Higher the signal, the more LEDs light up. It's basically an electronic applause meter. A big electrolytic capacitor smooths the response so the LEDs don't flicker with every audio cycle, but instead show the average sound level. Also good for testing how loud your neighbors can yell before the circuit maxes out. Let's power it up and see the result. It works from 5 to 15 volts, though you'll need to tweak resistor values for different supplies. I've tuned mine for 12 volts. The sensitivity knob can make it ignore my voice completely. or light the whole bar from just moderate volume. I basically built a light show that judges me. Sure, there are specialized ICs that do all this much better, but where is the fun in that? The amplifier we built today is single-ended. It only lets current flow one way. Speakers, though, need alternative current. To fake that, we'll add an output capacitor. It charges on the positive half wave and discharges on the negative, creating a full AC swing. That's how Class A amplifiers work. They sound great and double as hand warmers. Later came the push-pull or Class B design, where one transistor handles the positive half and another handles the negative. From there engineers invented a whole alphabet of amplifier classes. Back in my school days, I built a class B transistor amplifier myself. Dual channel with a heavy 270W TV transformer, steel case from old military gear and heat sink transistors. It could pump out over 100 watts per channel, so of course I couldn't resist throwing a little home concert. The only mistake was using only a 20W speaker. Let's just say the party didn't last long. The voice coil tried to leave the speaker at the speed of sound. No cinematic explosion like Back to the Future, but enough to make teenage me feel like Marty McFly. Of course, in real applications we use op-amps and audio ICs. They are far more reliable and efficient. But building amplifiers from discrete transistors, that's how you truly learn how electronics think, and maybe how to burn your fingers along the way. That's it for today's dive into transistors amplifiers. If you enjoyed this, 
hit that like button, subscribe and stay tuned. We've got plenty more fascinating experiments ahead. And remember, keep your bias steady and your smoke inside the components.